What's up, Pen and Ink fans? Tom Otto with Gold Spot Pens. Today is Friday, and it is officially the first day of spring. And we had to go in the Otto household to do a little bit of something extra to kind of celebrate this nice warm day that we have in New Jersey and celebrate the fifth day of the remote learning, uh, which we embrace and love so much. Um, but I hope that you guys are doing okay. Um, you know, I know that things are rapidly changing and we're also changing along as well. And, uh, you know, we're trying to do whatever is the most safest and responsible thing uh, when it comes to being able to make sure that this does not get to the levels of which we had seen in other countries, Italy, China, and uh, and making sure that everybody's, you know, especially the elderly, that we're going to make sure that they're well taken care of and not exposed to this crazy thing that's going on. So I know you've been hearing a lot about this, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But today, I want to show you guys uh, pens that I have that are in my current collection that I'll be using throughout the pandemic because I'm not going to be getting any more new pens except for the ones that maybe I might be picking up at the office, might swing by there when no one else is around and maybe grab a few things. So if there's a few things that you'd like to see on these live videos, let me know and I might be able to swing by and grab one to do like a little live unboxing or something like that. So, um, but while people are not there at the office. So um, let's get, take a look. Uh, take a look at some pens that I have in my current collection. So let me uh, switch the camera back around. Got the outside. So I set up a little area in my work space here. Like I mentioned the other day, I had to kind of do it outside. And I got some strong light coming through, that nice bright light coming through the, the window there. I'm going to open it up a little because it's kind of getting a little warm. So I was showing you guys uh, the other day, I have three pens that are currently inked up. Let's not include that one here. So this is one of my most favorite pens and you'd seen this on the Tom's top five pens of 2019. And this is the Lamy Bauhaus, uh, the Bauhaus edition 2000, which is actually showing up really nicely in this light. You could really see that nice blue, navy blue color, which uh, comes out quite nice right now. And this clip is just like it's polished that mirror finish and it's got some finger, you know, marks and whatnot. But um, so many things to like about this pen. And I had mentioned it on that video. Uh, just the hooded nib, the slip cap, the feel of the Macrolon material, the hinged spring loaded clip here, the piston fill. It's just so much to like about this pen. I've been holding out on for so long on a Lamy 2000 just for the right one to come along. And I think this was it, despite the fact that uh, it is quite a, uh, a shockingly expensive pen for a limited edition Lamy pen. But um, that's definitely one of my favorites. I was glad to ink up this week. Another one I picked up this week, actually grabbed this from the office, was this Opus 88 Demo. And this is the demo I showed off on the uh, journaling demonstration the other day. It is a uh, eyedropper fill fountain pen. Uh, so you'd have to open up this section here and drop ink using an eyedropper right into the barrel. And it has a, a safety uh, plunger here, safety valve, that when you open it up like this, you'll be able to take advantage of the full amount of ink that's in this barrel. Uh, whereas if I had it closed like this, I might be able to write a little bit with this big Pilot Parallel nib, uh, but it would soon then run out of ink within maybe like a half a page or a page or so. It's a cool pen to do something like this little header that I put here, the pens for the pandemic. And then there's this Visconti Van Gogh, of which is one of my favorite pens because of the fact that it has uh, this beautiful, artistic, swirly, faceted resin, which like I mentioned for the Lamy, the, the light is really coming through nicely to show off all of these colors. So it's got a lot of different colors. This is called the Self-Portrait Blue model. Has a, I can't really get the nib too well here because it goes into the shadow, but has a number five size stainless steel nib. Visconti nib. It's a fine point, but it writes more like a medium or even a broad. It has a great flow, but it does have a rather large tip size on it. 
fills by cartridge converter. One thing I will say about these, I'm almost done with ink on that. One thing I will say about these Van Goghs is that one thing you have to be careful of is not to rinse out the inner part of the cap here because there is the metal. And if you leave water and the metal in here, it just will start to corrode the inside of that magnet that's there. And then I noticed like it would have an issue with capping the pen. It was a very loose cap uh, of the when it the magnetically sealed part of it here. So what I did was I used some uh, metal polish and I polished up the inside and now it caps just fine, but it kind of gave me a little bit of a problem before. Uh, so pens that are in the bullpen, pun intended. So we have, uh, first of all, we have a pen that they, you guys see a lot of uh, whenever I pull this out on like one of the YouTube videos or something is that this uh, Leonardo Momento Zero, the uh, limited edition celluloid, Mediterranean celluloid with a 14 karat gold stub nib. These are pens I don't have inked currently at the moment, but uh, they will and can jump in at any point. Another pen that I had seen, I had shown on the uh, the 2019 Tom's Top 5 pens was the Omas Ogiva, and this is the cocktail in the Angel, or the Blue Angel. And neat thing about this pen, it's got, it's, it's got a 14 karat gold extra flexible nib and ebonite feed unique to the Omas brand, of which is actually brought back with Scribo. Scritura Bolognese it has a lot of employees that used to work at Omas, and they manufacture this Scribo feel, which is something that's available on goldspot.com, that has 14 karat gold nib flex nib options in fine, medium, and broad, extra fine as well. Uh, but there are also piston fills, of which this is also a piston fill too. Very beautiful, lightweight kind of pen. It's it's ribbed here, faceted, kind of like a door column. It's this nice cap band that's here. And this little nice sort of uh, Greek fret band that's at the section here is also a beautiful accent. Pen that I had received as a gift one Christmas is this Sailor 1911 Riallo in the Music Nib. And it's a pen that I love writing with because it is such a reliable, it's a wet writing stub, essentially. It's just the music nibs are not triple tied like most other music nibs. This is a two tine music nib uh, that writes more like a stub. So, but still, when Sailor does it, it's a great, great, great stub. Has good ink capacity because it's a piston fill. And it also allows you to write upside down as well. So instead of just writing uh, normally, you would get a nice broad line, thin horizontal stroke. If you write with the nib upside down like this, you could write in the margins or you could write a little bit smaller. It's a little bit drier, a little scratchier too, but or scritchier, I would say. Next pen that was on the top five pens, which I think looks really nice in this light as well, is the Platinum 3776 Century Kumpo Limited Edition. This was one I had to snap up before everybody got it at gold spot. <laughs> There's certain advantages to being uh, part of a, of a retail team. So that's one of them is that if there's a limited edition that are, is going to be in high demand, I can usually get my hands on it before everybody else does. So I know that I'll have at least first dibs on such a thing. This has got the soft medium 14 karat gold nib on it. It's a platinum proprietary converter or ink cartridge, which I have the converter installed. This is a pen that usually comes out my rotation pretty quickly. Um, I don't have it sitting around for very long because it is such a nice writer. And it's got that slip and seal cap mechanism that keeps the point nice and fresh. And just is, is a gorgeous looking pen. Love to just play around with this pen, just seeing the light bouncing off those uh, the ribbing that's in the material there. A pen that usually I don't take out very often because it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean is the Parker Vacumatic, and this is a large size, uh, or I guess standardized, as you would say, it's not like the junior or debutante size. This is um, the Azure Blue, which I mean, I for the same reason that I just absolutely adore the Momento Zero, the Parker Vacumatic with these uh, stacked rings of the um, of this pearlized like celluloid type material, it's just beautiful to look at and reflect uh, awesomely in the light. 
The uh, reason why it's kind of a pain to clean is because this is a vacuumatic system. So it's fully functional. I have a good um, diaphragm that's in here. But the thing is, it just it just has it just it takes such a long time to get this thing to clean out properly. Yes, Mike, I had to take it out. I had to take it out to show the world. This is my this is my collection here. I'm showing you guys all the pens that I have at my disposal for the pandemic. So another pen that I have that I like using and I, I've been taking out a lot because of the nib change I did on it is the Estabrook SD. So this I had also modified with a little uh, Rook Coffee sticker. And I know people are probably like groaning about, oh, how could you put a sticker on such a nice pen? But hey, you know, people leave the stickers on their pilot pens. So why not actually put a cool looking sticker on a pen? Um, I just like this. I love Rook as the as a brand, kind of like a, a fanboy of that particular brand of coffee. Um, one thing I did to this pen was I put a, um, this is a 14 karat gold Yovo nib that's been modified and actually given to me by uh, Mr. Penboy Roy. And what I did was I bought a ebonite feed from Flexible Nib Factory. It's a Yovo number six ebonite feed. And that way it could kind of feed in that ink because I originally I had the uh, the standard plastic Yovo feed that went with it. And I just would always get to that point where like I'd have to like either shake it or like I'd have to advance the converter to push up the ink to get to get it to flow again. Because like it would flow pretty nicely, but then it would just kind of starve out on me. And I would have a hard start and wouldn't be able to get it to write again. But with this uh, ebonite feed, it's been able to keep up pretty nicely and give me a nice solid wet flow. Another thing I like about the uh, the SD is just its size, a uh, nice gorgeous blue marble acrylic, and that that cool capping mechanism is is fun to toy with because it has that spring-loaded inner cap that's there, so you know it's nice and tight and that the point is sealed. So it's another cool pen. I enjoy it a lot. This is an Edison Menlo which I had custom designed, or just it was just a custom pen because this is not a production model pen from the Edison Pen Company, but uh, Brian Gray made this for me. And currently I have a stub 1.1 millimeter nib on it. This one also doesn't see much action for a similar reason as to the, uh, the vacuumatic, is that this is the push filler, or the, I guess they call it the draw filler, or no. This is the push or the draw filler. It's, it's the one that doesn't have the the diaphragm like the vacuumatic does. So with these, it's it's a little bit harder to clean out. You have to keep plunging it over and over again just to be able to clean the ink out of the pen when you're done with it. And it does hold a lot of ink in there. So if I want to fill this pen up, I'm committed for at least like a month or six weeks with this particular pen. That's why I put I opted for a stub nib on it because at least it'll keep the ink flowing a little quicker. Uh, this is such a nice, beautiful, transparent in some areas sort of acrylic, you know, that I just, I love this look and I love the fact that the entire line of Menlo's, that they have lots of different colors, all sorts of nice colors in that collection. And then there was the other, uh, I think this rounds out the top five of my uh, 2019 top five all-time post uh, that was on YouTube. And this is a uh, Herald from way back in 2009. So this I had custom made back when Brian was making pens out of his garage and the Edison Pen Co was mostly just Brian and Andrea. And uh, Andrea, I don't know why I pronounced her name that way. I'm just pronouncing things weird today. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he made this and actually it was during the time where he would have a live cam set up in his workshop so you could see the pens being made on the lathe. So that was also a cool little neat tidbit about that. But this was my really, you know, first expensive pen that I splurged on uh, outside of a Lamy Safari, which we'll get to as well. But this was like my next level sort of pen that has always been with me and still continues to look amazing and write amazing. So can't argue with it. Got to keep it. Uh, this was a gift that we received with compliments uh, visiting the Caveco pen factory and offices in uh, Nuremberg, Germany. So this was sitting there waiting for us on the conference table. We each got one of them, the, each of the Goldspot team. 
And uh, it's pretty cool because it takes into account a little Frankenpenning, taking the white grip section, white cap, black barrel, and a black nib. And it looks really cool. I think that this could go if they decided to make this like part of the standard classic line. I think that they could sell these um, if they wanted to, this particular design. I think it's pretty neat uh, how you could combine different colors and come up with a different fashionable look for a pen. Uh, this is a fun pen to take with you on the go because uh, it fits in a just a standard international size cartridge. You could get a Kaweco Sport converter for it. Um, it doesn't really hold that much ink, but this is more of a pen that's great for just taking out, like keeping it in your pocket. It's a knock around pen, but it can take its abuse. Similar to another pen that I have in the case here, which I have two of, which are Lamy Safaris. I took this one with me to Germany when visiting the Lamy factory. This is like I think one of the first few pens that I actually had owned, fountain pens wise, um, that I still have with me. And this is a uh, no nonsense Bauhaus inspired plastic material for the cap and everything. But it's just it's such a nice writer. And I have the silver clip version. This was the um, version I think that they transitioned from here. This with the silver clip is the more recent version of the. Uh, L14 blue, and this one's got a, a 1.9 millimeter nib, which I quickly realized was just way too big for just general writing. It's more for like something like this where we're, you know, put making a header or like those decorating uh, cards or something like that. This uh, extra fine nib is great for just general writing purposes. It writes more like, let's say, a, 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 a medium almost because it's just so thick, um, which I mean, I know. People aren't too much of a too much fans of the fact that an extra fine writes that thickly, but I don't mind it so much as long as it's in that ballpark. So another pen that I have here is actually a gold spot uh, pen. This is a, a Momento. I don't know if you guys remember this line that we had made a few years ago, but these were uh, it's it's a uh, it's a Taiwanese pen. But it's, uh, it's made from this nice, uh, colorful acrylic. And this is the ballpoint version. We did have the uh, rollerball and fountain pen, but uh, happened to, you know, just happened to kind of fall into my possession one way or another. I think I ended up buying it for, uh, because it was like one of the last few pieces that were left. But it's a cool, it's a cool pen. You know, it's just, I need to have like a ballpoint available at some point just in case all of my... Maybe my ink goes bad, or I just uh, break all my bottles of ink, or uh, I got that I got that uh, that ring doorbell set up there. Um, all right, so we're almost done here. Uh, this one's actually have to get repaired. This is a Waterman Stalwart, made in USA. It's a pen that I purchased off of eBay because of its flexible 14 karat gold nib, and it's got a lever filler. But unfortunately, the filling system broke. So now it just sits in my case here and unfortunately is, uh, is kind of being uh, uh, neglected at the moment. But at least it's cleaned out. So it's an important thing that if you do not use your pens for a long time, you clean them out so that the ink doesn't crustify in there and become an issue for when you do want to start writing with it again. And then lastly, we have the uh, Pilot Parallel. This is the 6.0 millimeter nib but it has no nib because I put it on the Opus 88. Uh, so Carol asks, where do you go to get that pen repaired? So, Carol, if I were to get this Waterman Stalwart repaired, I would have to go to a person that I've gone and sent pens to in the past. Uh, his name is Aaron Zvabik of Pentiques.com, and I've sent him a few of my pens before uh, to get refurbished or to get the filling systems uh, repaired, and it does a great job fairly decent turnaround, like to about two weeks or so, and uh, was able to get it functioning, no muss, no fuss. Uh, he's uh, pretty close, and I think he also had taught uh, Brian Gray doing some stuff with the uh, with at least nib adjustments and things like that, so um, he came recommended to me through Brian Gray of Edison Pen, so I've used him personally, and that's who I would go to to get this fixed. However, I just have not had the time to get it fixed, but 
It will be eventually at some point. I would do like light writing with this. It's just I have so many other ones to keep me busy during these times. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. And I want to know in the comments below, let us know what you're writing with during these times. And uh, for right now, I mean, it, it, like it's going to be a long time, I think, until we get back to normal. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through this together. So feel free to comment below and let us know anything that you want us to cover in future live videos. And uh, just be there for each other, have support for each other, and just stay away from each other physically, though, because that's important. So I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in, and stay inky, my friends. Take care.